In this video, I'm going to give you three different ways in which you can back up your WordPress website. Stick around to the end because I'm going to give you the pros and cons of my preferred method just so you know which is ultimately the best way of moving forward. So first on the agenda is your hosting. Wherever your website is hosted, chances are they're going to give you a backup option. For this example, I have Cloudways as my preferred hosting account, but pretty much everyone will have some option. Check out the documentation to find out exactly where it is. So once I've logged into my Cloudways account, I can see all of the different websites I have hosted. Let's take this first one as an example. All you do is open up the actual website itself, the application, whatever you call it. And inside there, you should have an option that'll have something like backup and backup and restore. All we're going to do is open that option up and you can see this is taking automatic backups. And if I open those up, I could restore. But what I want to take a look at is the take backup now, which is basically a manual backup. We can tell it to do a backup right now. So if you want to change something on our website and we want to make sure we have a backup before we do it, this is the easiest way of doing it. We'll click take backup now. That'll go ahead, take a few moments, few minutes, however big your website is. Once that's finished, it'll tell us. And if we need to make a change and then restore, we can do that inside here. There we go. After a few moments, we now have a completed backup ready to go ahead and restore if we find something goes wrong with our website. So all we need to do is click on the list. You can see there's the latest, the one I've just taken. We can select it, hit restore application or restore website. That'll go ahead, restore everything back to exactly as it was before we made any changes. That's the quickest and easiest way, but it's not the best way. And I'll tell you why at the end of the video. The next way is inside your WordPress dashboard itself, and you can control this in various different ways. We're going to be using a totally free plugin for this. So just head over to your plugin section and click add new. Inside there, do a search for WP Vivid. I'll put a link to this in the description so you can take a look yourself. And there's the first option, migration backup staging. We're going to go ahead, install and activate it. I've already done that to save time. And then we're going to head over into the new option, which is backup and restore. Inside there, we've got a pretty simple interface. Now, don't be daunted by the amount of options inside you. It's really pretty straightforward. If we take a look, we've got backup manually, and we've three different options inside the free account, the database and the files. In other words, all of your WordPress website, just the WordPress files excluding your database or just the database excluding your files. I would always recommend you the database and files for everything to be backed up. Then we can choose two options. Save the backups locally onto your hosting account itself on the server or to the remote storage. We'll take a look at that as my third option in a moment. Let's leave this set to save backups to local. All we need to do is click up backup now, and that's going to go ahead and back everything up for us locally. In other words, onto our hosting account. And there we go. After a few moments, that has completed. Now, obviously, this is going to depend upon the size of your website. This is a test website, so it took a few seconds. So now if we scroll down, you'll see there's our backup. Tells us the date, the time, and also the location. And from here, we can go ahead and download this to take it off our actual server itself, or we can hit restore. Now restore will, as its name suggests, put it back to exactly as it was right now. So if you want to do that, you click the restore option. You can say you want to go ahead and restore, and that will then confirm it, and it'll go through the process. Again, depending upon the size of your website will depend upon how long this takes. Mine just takes a few seconds because it's basically a clean install of WordPress. And again, after a few seconds, that's now completed. We'll click OK to confirm, and our website now is back to what it was before we may have made any changes, updates, those kinds of things. So that's the second way of doing things. Now, the third way is to do this and send them off to a remote location. When I'm talking about cloud storage, let's hop over into the remote storage tab. And inside this tab, we have a selection of different locations, cloud-based locations, we can send our files. Now, this is a good way of doing things, and pretty much all of these options are free options, or they at least include a free tier. For our example, we're going to use Dropbox. I've just got a free Dropbox account set up. Once you choose that tab, all we need to do, and we only need to do this one time, is to authenticate this with Dropbox or Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, whatever you prefer. The process is a little different to confirm, but that's all the difference is. We'll say authenticate with Dropbox. This will then send us over to Dropbox where we can log in if we're not already logged in. 
Once we continue and log in, this will then send us a code so we can access the account. I'll just go ahead, drop my code in, tell it I want to trust this computer, and just click on Enter. That will then take us back into our website. We'll just log back in, and that will then take us back into Dropbox with everything set up, and we can now just add in a few other things. So we'll just leave this set as Dropbox, and we'll say Add Now. So that now has added Dropbox as our cloud-based storage. Jumping back into the Backup and Restore tab, you can see that now tells us that we have Dropbox set up as one of our remote storage options. So all we need to do is basically the same thing. The only difference is we'll say Send Backup to Remote Storage. This may take a little longer. We we'll click on Backup Now, and then that's going to go ahead. It's going to create a backup for us, and then it'll send that over to Dropbox, and we'll have an external version of our backup saved on Dropbox, or whichever option you chose. And after a few moments, that has now completed. If we scroll down, you'll see we now have two backups. The bottom one is saved locally, denoted by the little icon for localhost. And the one we've just done right now is saved over to Dropbox, and we have the same options to download or restore this. So if you want to take a download and save a copy to your own local computer, you could do that here. Or click on Restore to restore everything back to the way it was. Now, a little bonus tip. If you don't want to have to do this yourself, what I would recommend you do is hop over to the Schedule tab, and inside there, enable a backup schedule. If this is disabled, simply go ahead, check that option, and then choose how often you want to create a backup. Every 12 hours, right the way through to monthly, and choose what you want to backup, again, from those three options we saw originally. And then you can also go ahead and choose where you want to save them to, localhost, or send them over to your remote storage. Then you save your changes, that will save the schedule, and it will create those automated backups based upon the frequency that you've set up. This is a great way to have this going where you control it alongside what your hosting account is doing if you use the hosting backup and restore options as well. So now we've seen the three different methods, which is my preferred option, which do I recommend you should do for yourself? Well, I would always recommend using the third option, which is to send things over to an external location like a cloud account like Dropbox or something along those lines. This means that if anything happens to your server, your account gets suspended, deleted, or anything else, you've always got your backups stored somewhere else. Use that in conjunction with your platform, your hosting account, creating backups for you, and you've always got a level of redundancy in place should something happen. Again, these are all free options. So if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, but you still want to have a pretty simplistic but powerful backup solution in place, this is how I would recommend setting it up. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.